Uh, last time we talked about a um, standalone uh, sand control uh, technologies, techniques, uh, which are which include um, line <coughs> slotted liners, the <coughs> wire rapid screens, uh, uh, wire rapid uh, packed screens. Uh, and the uh, expand the um, move on mesh type screens and expandable screens. We talked about the different uh, specifications of each of these, and um, there are some uh, specific uh, of the uh, specifics of the uh, standalone screen failures because these. Screens are kind of, <clears throat> as it says for it, uh, it's a uh, without any um, uh, support. So, uh, I mean, uh, from uh, between the uh, uh, formation and this screen, there is nothing else. And uh, we should be, uh, there is a uh, plugging uh, like uh, from the uh, smaller uh, finds like a shale uh, or the mud cake, which can be uh, surrounding these uh, screens and uh, preventing the um, flow, obscuring the flow. So therefore, <clears throat> even if we clean the mud cake from the uh, with the some acid soap or acid wash from the uh, uh, top part, top part, especially in horizontal wells, uh, the removed uh, mud cake. Uh, some of this mud cake may still uh, left over uh, on the uh, bottom side of the uh, horizontal well, so it will be kind of again uh, prevent the uh, obstruction on the uh, flow pass. Well, that's uh, kind of a uh, why uh, the other <coughs> sorry uh, the other uh, uh, failure reason for these type of uh, screens or uh, sand exclusion methods are uh, erosion because at uh, much higher rates those uh, screens may be eroded if the sand. Uh, the, the, uh, if the um, the holes are made or the uh, uh, the flow pass through the wire or mesh is very uh, is not uh, small enough to prevent the fire, the very small fines, then these uh, sands may be uh, eroding. And uh, therefore, you, when we uh, design these uh, standalone screens, we have to take into account the uh, sand grain size distribution in the um, reservoir in the formation and uh, to design these holes on the screens or, or the uh, entry ports for the mesh or the uh, wire wrap. Uh, regarding to this uh, distribution of the grain size from uh, for the reservoir sand. And um, another thing is to reduce the plugging either by uh, large inflow areas with premium screens or self cleaning designs. Uh, <clears throat> so we should um, design these screens so that uh, the plugging effect, the plugging does not affect the uh, performance of these screens and as the um, experience uh, shows, the premium screens and wire rapid screens are performing 
better than uh, pre-packed screens and the uh, premium screens and the wire app screens are uh, more popular now than the pre-packed screens because uh, because of this uh, reducing plugging effect. The standalone screen uh, technique is applicable. Uh, th this is about the sand uh, screens and uh, the sorry the uh, sand uh, grain size and the distribution uh, where the um, this D40 to D90 is the unconfirmed uni uniformity. Uh, coefficient. Unicorf uniformity coefficient means how the uh, <clears throat> sand grain size are distributed. So the distribution of the uh, grain size of the uh, reservoir sand. So the, uh, the how large the, the range of the grain size. So the obviously the Plus this number, then the uniformity is more. Uh, sorry, less. So, uh, so the uh, uh, it is it is uh, bad sorted, not uh, poor sorted sand. So we have very large uh, grain size distribution, uh, and that that means we have uh, different uh, size of distribution and it is quite difficult to uh, design uh, the, uh, the standalone screen. Therefore, uh, if we have a uh, less than three, uh, we can use wire, we, we, should, we can use wire rapid screens. If it is less than five uh, premium screens, uh, or by the Bennett and Gilchrist uh, definitions, we can use uh, the uh, if the D50 is uh, the D50 is uh, some kind of a mean value of this distribution, and the uh, again, the if the uniformity is uh, more, uh, less than five, so it means it is more uh, less uniform. Then we should use premium screens. That are uh, be performs better. So these are different uh, um, guidelines, a sort of guidelines for the um, choosing between the wire rapid screens or premium screens. Um, the chart on this slide is talking about uh, at which conditions we have to make decision to apply the standalone screens or the uh, uh, gravel packs or premium screens or expandable screens. So this shows the, uh, the sand quality in terms of net pay, in terms of uh, uh, sorting and uniformity homogeneity and permeability and on this uh, the uh, y-axis we have a, a likelihood of sand to be produced and uh, so if we have low quality sand with high uh, likelihood or high probability of sand production then we have to use uh, open hole gravel pack because it's the best uh, sand control method, sand exclusion method, or uh, if we have a uh, high quality sand and uh, with this well, well sorting, well sorted, uh, low un uh, uniformity, then we can, uh, sorry, high uniformity, then uh, we can, uh, no, low, so low uniformity, then we can use the uh, just the conventional standalone screens that are li uh, slotted liners or uh, wire rapid screens 
um, and the uh, between them but, uh, as the condition change you can use premium uh, mesh or uh, standalone screens and the uh, expandable screens that are uh, usable for uh, medium uh, up to the 15,000 piles of fluid um, expandable screens as we said we are not good for the uh, high grade gas wells because of the uh, erosion issues, but mid uh, up to the 15,000 barrels oil, it should be okay if we have the conditions uh, applicable to, to that uh, category. Okay, here also we can see different uh, fields distribution, which are uh, water drive or gas drive. Uh, fields, so it also uh, uh, affects the decision uh, which uh, control should be used, what type of consent control should be used, because uh, the water drive or water injection is uh, again may uh, trigger even more uh, sand or uh, in later uh, the uh, field life or well life time. So therefore, the, these also should be taken into account uh, the, uh, the when we decide on uh, which type of uh, sand control methods to be applied. Next, uh, the uh, sand control methods, which is uh, quite extensively now uh, applied used in uh, especially high sand production uh, areas uh, wells or reservoirs uh, is uh, gravel packing and there is two uh, type of uh, gravel pack one is the uh, external gravel pack when we drill the well then uh, the <coughs> set the casing above the reservoir and then under the rim the reservoir so drill uh, with uh, with the larger diameter of bead to uh, enlarge this area and then we uh, inject the uh, gravel into this under rim area fill the gravel for the first put the screen and then uh, inject the gravel into this uh, area between the screen and the formation and the gravel is uh, after the filling the gravel uh, the uh, this area up to this uh, top of the reservoir or the uh, uh, a bit above the reservoir to make sure that the uh, the gravel pack is covered full reservoir and then we uh, just uh, wash out this uh, uh, the uh, wash pipe with wash pipe and pull it out and this is the external uh, open hole gravel pack okay so that's uh, called open hole gravel pack uh, usually it's called open hole gravel pack but another name for that is external uh, gravel pack uh, the uh, another type is internal gravel pack uh, which is used for the case and perforating uh, per perforated uh, completions. Again, here as well, we uh, run uh, into the whole screen and then uh, fill this uh, the uh, uh, zone between the uh, screen and the perforations with the gravel to prevent sand control and then uh, the uh, uh, produce the wall through this uh, gravel pack uh, preventing the um, any fluid uh, solids being uh, entered into the uh, uh, well bore here as uh, the um, same with the, the uh, case stand uh, perforated Wells here we can do multi-zone 
travel packing and producing from the multi zone so we can isolate the zones uh, the um, and uh, use different zones uh, for uh, the um, treated different zones um, as per the development plan. So uh, the internal gravel pack has a uh, some specific uh, requirements when we have to make sure that the perforations are filled with the gravel fully because if we don't uh, achieve this then we will get some uh, if we get some uh, empty areas uh, in the uh, perforation tunnel then these uh, empty areas uh, will be uh, filled by the formation sand or uh, the formation uh, shale and this will enter the uh, this will uh, degrade or reduce the eff efficiency of the gravel pack. This will uh, reduce the permeability of the gravel pack. And uh, so this will be uh, actually the uh, reduce the performance of the gravel pack as well as uh, eroding the uh, eroding the uh, base pipe screen and the uh, so both uh, well performance the well productivity and the uh, gravel pack performance will be uh, compromised or uh, lowered so in terms of uh, the uh, external gravel pack, uh, formation sa sand uh, is stopped at the gravel pack outer edge, that, that edge. That means it should not reach the uh, base pipe screen. Okay. Uh, there should be Again, as in case of the uh, internal gravel pack, the gravel pack should uh, fill the uh, area of the and the sand, there's also a screen uh, fully without any gaps, because gaps, again, as I said, will reduce the performance. Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so, the, if the if there is any gap within the uh, gravel pack, assumably gravel pack zone, then these uh, gaps will be uh, filled by the reservoir uh, formation uh, sand or formation. Uh, formation, the um, shale particles, and this will again uh, the reduce efficiency of the gravel pack and uh, well performance. Uh, using uh, use of clean completion fluids and complete, complete viscosity break of uh, polymer based fluids, these are uh, again uh, for the to make sure that the uh, gravel pack is uh, injected into the uh, well uh, with the kind of correct or uh, compatible fluid, uh, the so and the fluid is reversed or the fluid is circulated back. Of course, there is some. Uh, loss into the uh, formation, but we have to try to uh, get uh, the uh, minimum uh, product, the loss of the fluid into the uh, reservoir and circulate it through this, uh, through the wash pipe. And then uh, the last 
well, the breaker in uh, the uh, injection should break those polymer-based fluids and uh, make sure that these fluids are again uh, flown back to the uh, surface uh, without creating any uh, uh, damage to the uh, formation or to the permeability of the uh, gravel pack. So we'll talk about that. Okay. Um, open all gravel pack. Uh, some consideration or wh which areas should the, it can be applied are the uh, normally used in uh, the shallow, low pressure, heavy crude reservoirs. Uh, borehole is normally on the rim to increase the well bore diameter and inflow area. Uh, this is to compensate the uh, productivity effect, sorry, the effect of uh, gravel pack on the productivity, the negative effect, so that by increasing the well bore diameter, we try to increase the productivity. Uh, hole stability can be concerned during drilling and completion operations. And because uh, presumably these uh, sand control methods are applied where the uh, unconsolidated sands uh, um, exist, and therefore the whole stability is an issue, both in drilling and completion operations. And of course, often uh, higher productivity than internal pack, internal gravel pack. Uh, again, because the area of the uh, production is larger, the whole interval is open to flow. But there is, of course, as we uh, said uh, from the uh, completion types, uh, with the open hole, we have uh, water or gas, uh, excessive gas production control. Uh, lockage, uh, lockage. Uh, so uh, it means in many cases it is almost impossible to uh, control the uh, uh, water production, uh, water breaks through or gas coming. Uh, for the uh, internal gravel packs, again, as we said, no. Uh, gravel mix, gravel and uh, reservoir sand mixing in the um, perforations. The other uh, uh, thing here is the high shot density and big hole charts. Uh, if you remember when we talked about the charts and the uh, perforation techniques, we mentioned that the uh, uh, when we plan to, hide, uh, to, to uh, install hydraulic uh, sorry, the uh, gravel pack or uh, any other uh, packs like frac pack or uh, uh, gravel or the, the um, hydraulic fracturing, we have to use a, a big hole charts and apply high shot density so that the injection of the slurry with the propans or with the gravel is not uh, screened out. Okay. And therefore, uh, here, uh, the, the, uh, here it, it is uh, applied. So we have to use big hole charts. So there is no uh, uh, excessive uh, tension or excessive uh, pressure, uh, the, the uh, friction pressure uh, injecting these uh, uh, gravel sand into the perforation areas, perforation tunnels, and there is no tipping out like this or screen out like this when the not all the uh, gravel can enter into the uh, perforation tunnels. Okay. Uh, for the case of uh, gravel pack consideration, uh, the uh, frequently used uh, sand control completion option, I wouldn't say most, but uh, well, it is 
uh, OK, why it says uh, most? Uh, because uh, sometimes people uh, apply the uh, case stall uh, because of, first of all, uh, sorry, the uh, gravel pack. Uh, after they see some uh, uh, severe sand production and they uh, put the gravel pack into existing uh, case stall. And also, the case stall is, uh, uh, is providing uh, isolation for undesirable gas or water production, uh, as we said, uh, which is not possible uh, for the open hole. Uh, but here we have to apply again the efficient perforation systems, uh, meaning that the phasing and short density uh, should be uh, very well uh, thought, uh, considered, designed. And the uh, big hole entry uh, charge should be um, uh, applied. Okay, so again, mixing uh, sand and gravel in perforation leads to low productivity, and the um, easier to uh, work over compared to the open hole gravel pack because again, because the selectivity, because we can set a package between the zones and uh, make any change if there is uh, any work over, if there is a need for particular zones. Okay, uh, in some uh, cases you can see that I am repeating some information. This is because uh, the I'm uh, first because I'm using different uh, sources and also uh, I, I try to make it uh, important uh, points uh, in uh, repeating so that it is uh, getting uh, to your uh, attention. No, not just uh, once uh, mentioning and going on, but uh, repeating some information that is important to, to be attentive to. Okay, the another uh, option uh, like a uh, uh, internal gravel pack is the uh, fragment pack. Fragment pack we uh, talked about uh, the perforations as well. Uh, this is a uh, perforation method when we uh, simultaneously do the fracking during the perforation, and then we frack the. Uh, we uh, by that we uh, bypass the. Uh, cement and uh, formation dam damaged zone and we inject into this fracture uh, high permeability uh, fra uh, the uh, gravel pack or, or propant and this uh, fracture has very high permeability and this also uh, uh, increase the um, formation uh, exposure to the wall board. So uh, we increase the inflow area, inflow zone of the well by the uh, uh, length of this fracture and the, uh, with, uh, the uh, width of this fracture. This is length of the fracture or the petroleum engineers are referring to half length. Uh, from the well board to the one wing uh, in, the, in, in direction of one wing. And uh, the width of the fracture is this width, which is uh, kind of uh, maybe a uh, few inches. And the, this might be some uh, uh, meters. And the um, the Height of the uh, uh, fracture depends on the uh, reservoir, depends on the injection pressure, and the uh, it is uh, not desirable to to of course to uh, fract fract the reservoir uh, uh, exceeding the reservoir. Uh, boundaries so we don't get into the water zone or gas zone 
to accept to to um, to prevent the, any uh, early water breakthrough or gas breakthrough. Okay. So, uh, and this is kind of the oriented uh, sand, uh, the fracturing oriented perforation uh, in in a, uh, in a perpendicular uh, direction to the minimum uh, horizontal stress. And here you can see the uh, comparison of gravel pack and frag pack, uh, where you can see that frag pack mostly has better results in terms of uh, skins, lower skins, and that's related to the um, uh, low uh, fluid injection, uh, uh, less, uh, sorry, the uh, longer in, uh, in the uh, penetration into the well bore, so the larger area, and the uh, whereas for the gravel pack, open hole gravel pack, you can see, or even internal uh, gravel pack, you can see that we inject a lot of fluid and we may uh, lose fluid, lose fluid into the reservoir. And this gravel may be uh, uh, filled by the, uh, plugged by the uh, Reservoir sand and the uh, uh, shale particles. So, um, therefore, these are the uh, frag pack and the, uh, the uh, gravel pack uh, comparison, which is showing that the frag pack is working now better than gravel pack. Uh, again, you have seen this, uh, but again, the completion skin uh, comparison where, where, where the uh, different completion, sand control completion were applied. And here you can see that the, the, the lower skin was uh, achieved from the uh, uh, company case and perforated wells without any uh, sand control, but they uh, were very uh, high sand production. Uh, so the uh, production rates were uh, downsized because of this uh, sand production. And then uh, with the uh, applied uh, Standalone or expandable screens uh, like uh, slotted liners uh, and the wired liners, we have a different type of uh, the uh, and the open hole gravel pack. We have much higher uh, skins for for these for these worlds. So the. Gravel pack, although it's considered as a uh, one of the best or the best uh, sand control method, we have here a uh, few design issues that has to be followed or has to be considered to make these uh, gravel packs uh, working uh, efficiently. Uh, one of these is the gravel pack size. Uh, gra sorry, gravel pack sand size. So the gravel pack is uh, consists of uh, these, uh, some sands. Uh, it might be artificial or might be uh, natural sand, but uh, sorted sand. And these are uh, uh, special sand types uh, used in in the industry. And uh, here you can see the. Uh, um, effect of gravel size, gravel pack sand size, let's say, uh, I will say gravel size uh, to be short. Uh, so the uh, the gravel size is the uh, very important because when we use uh, too large gravel size, then the distance or pore uh, 
throats between them will be also large and this will uh, allow some uh, formation sand to be produced to the, into the uh, well bore and it will also uh, accumulate it in the gravel pack and uh, it will uh, finally or eventually um, reduce the efficiency of the gravel pack uh, by the uh, reducing the permeability and uh, and the gravel pack uh, gra the sand control is also compromised because of this uh, large size of the uh, uh, flow pass which allows uh, most of the sand formation sand uh, uh, flowing through this uh, but on the other hand, if we uh, have very small uh, gravel size, then this will be uh, low permeability. Although formation sand will be uh, stopped, it will be uh, uh, the uh, well performance issue now uh, with the uh, less well productivity. We will talk about the quanti quantified uh, uh, methods of the, uh, deciding uh, the uh, on gravel pack size, gravel size on the next uh, slides. But to uh, to uh, st to go to that, we first to have to have to understand the quality control of gravel pack sand. Uh, so the uh, it is of course must be uh, very well. Uh, sorted and the uh, rounded because these type of uh, the sand provide better permeability it should be uh, strength strong sand grains so they are not uh, collapsed or uh, the uh, crashed uh, during the injection during the uh, 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 putting into the well bore and uh, doing the uh, so they are not crashed under the high uh, production uh, uh, flow conditions uh, should be uh, free from the clay uh, etc and the uh, acid solubility is also uh, another uh, parameter for for those and as I said, there are some uh, synthetic gravels uh, with the low density, high permeability, I hence high strength, but they are very expensive, of course. And uh, they are available, uh, not only these synthetics, but the, uh, the uh, natural sands also are available. So the uh, at different uh, sizes, different uh, so and it is uh, measured by US mesh uh, term or units and the uh, the smaller this number the larger grain size and these numbers are uh, the number of uh, holes on the mesh okay so the mesh analysis or sieve analysis is the uh, when we use the uh, the series of sieves on top of uh, on top of, uh, each other, can you see me? Hello. Yes, teacher. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, we can see. So, sieve analysis is when we have different size of mesh on top of each other, and the uh, the uh, the most top one it has a, uh, of course, larger size of the mesh of the holes, and that means the larger size of the uh, mesh or the uh, hole, the uh, less number of uh, these holes, okay, and therefore the uh, 
the smaller number of this mesh means the larger size of the grain can pass through this mesh. OK, and uh, so that, that means that uh, if we have lower number of uh, US mesh term, then uh, we have a larger size of the gravel or sand. And this is how actually the sieve analysis is done. But this is uh, the measure measurement unit for the gravel pack sands or even propant sands. And that's how we define that what the, when we design the, this gravel pack, well, you can say that we need 12 to 20 or 20 to 40 or 40 to 60 uh, gravel uh, sand. That means we want uh, this uh, size of the uh, gravel size, this range of gravel size, and the, these are the median and the typical permeabilities for each uh, gravel size. Uh, of course, the higher the uh, gravel size, the higher the permeability, but then the uh, less uh, sand uh, control uh, possibility ability of this uh, gravel, uh, gravel pack. So, and based on this uh, mesh uh, uh, construction, we do also sieve analysis of the formation sand. Sieve analysis means that we uh, measure each uh, the quantity of uh, each size left on each mesh, okay, as we uh, put this sand, the formation sand, through this series of mesh, meshes, and then, uh, of course, depending on the uh, size of the grain, uh, at each mesh, we will have a uh, different type, uh, different uh, amount of sand, and then, this different amount of sand is uh, the distribution of the formation uh, sand uh, or sieve analysis of this formation sand. And uh, when we uh, put this, uh, when we uh, quantify D10 or D40 or D50, that means 10% uh, of the sand is, let's say, uh, 1.0.1. Uh, uh, micro uh, di uh, mill uh, millimeter, uh, the uh, forty percent of sand is uh, a little bit more than uh, zero point. The smaller and the fifty is even more smaller and uh, uh, etc. Okay, so this is zero point five, not zero zero point five. Uh, sorry, this is uh, in in decreasing. Uh, this is a zero, the, the, uh, there should be uh, two zeros. So that means we have this distribution of the uh, sand grains size. And uh, we talked about uniformity coefficient, which is the ratio between D40 and D90. And of course, the larger the distance between them, then the uh, uh, more uh, the less the uniform the sand, the, the less sorted. Okay. So the larger this number, so if this D40, D40 is here, for example, a little bit higher than uh, one zero point zero five. And D90 here is about uh, some uh, 0 0.007, uh, 0.002, okay, or 3. And then we have a the larger this distance, then the range of the distribution, range of the sizes are higher, uh, larger. That means this is not very well sorted, okay? And there is a uh, some uh, the scale of this uh, distribution when we uh, see the uh, C is less than three, then uh, it is a uh, well sorted. C when the uniformity coefficient is between the 
three and five, it might consider it uh, a uniform. Uh, five, between the five and ten, it is a moderate or poorly sorted. And if this ratio is more than ten, it means very uh, poor sorted, uh, highly uh, non-uniform. That means we may have uh, the grain sizes of uh, very large and very small, and this is not very uh, uh, well sorted. Each uh, compo each uh, size uh, is distributed uh, um, almost evenly, uh, and it is very difficult for that kind of sense uh, the um, to 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 make a decision on uh, the gravel pack sand size uh, or even uh, standalone screens uh, uh, selection. And you can see here two different sands distribution, uh, grain size, uh, sand grain size distribution. And this one is more uh, uh, less uniform. And this one is uh, better, uh, highly uniform. And this one also this, uh, the same uh, distribution, but here we have the cumulative weight or cumulative percentage. This is uh, percentage, uh, and here we have cumulative. So, and the, the uh, in comparison with the better or higher uh, the um, uniform uh, lower uniformity, you can see the uh, lower uh, poorly sorted has more less steep uh, statistic uh, presentation. So the steeper this line, in which it means the, the sand is more uniform or better sorted. Okay. And the uh, technique to decide on this uh, gravel pack sand and the formation sand is called uh, saucer uh, uh, methods or saucer criteria. Uh, saucer he has uh, done some experiment when he put the inflow, uh, the flow flow through this format. He uh, they had a, uh, a formation sand and the gravel pack sand, and changing the the, uh, for the uh, D50 of gravel sand and D50, the relationship between the D50 of gravel sand and D50 of the formation sand, they were flowing fluid uh, from the formation uh, side uh, through the uh, gravel pack, uh, and they uh the observed that uh, if the D the ratio of D50 uh, above the uh, over the D50 of so D50 of the gravel uh, over the D50 of the sand D50 means mean of the grain size and so, so or average grain size or this number then, up to the uh, three, the well productivity reduced by using too small gravel. You can see D50 over D, uh, D50 gravel uh, uh, over D50 sand, uh, if it is less than three, then we have a situation when the gravel pack sand is very small. So uh, the sand, although sand uh, and the, although sand Production, sand production is prevented, but the uh, uh, reservoir uh, permeability, uh, sorry, the permeability of the gravel is also uh, um, affected. And this is the, um, uh, the permeability of the uh, uh, the, the final permeability over the perme permeability initial, how the permeability changed due to this uh, the experiment as we change this. And then when they change the uh, this ratio 
uh, between the uh, three and six. It was ideally uh, preventing sand and providing uh, high uh, sand control, uh, sorry, high uh, flow performance. Uh, on the next step, between the six and by about 17 or 16, the formation sand uh, has lower, uh, sorry, the, uh, uh, the mixture has a lower per permeability because uh, the sand formation uh, enters, uh, sand, uh, formation sand enters the gravel pack sand and it makes the formation sand, uh, sorry, the uh, gravel pack sand the uh, lower than formation uh, uh, permeability. Okay, uh, so when we have larger gravel pack sand size, then the sand from the formation, as we said, enters the gravel pack and it uh, changes the gravel pack permeability uh, to the lower values. And then we have a uh, very uh, The, the reservoir, sorry, the gravel pack performance in terms of uh, productivity reduced. And uh, once it is exceeding these numbers, then we get the two large uh, gravel pack si size and we have a no sand control. Sand is produced completely, uh, uh, all the sand is producing from the reservoir is produced into the world bore and uh, to the uh, surface. So that's the saucer criteria. And the, there is another uh, approach called Schwartz criteria. It's a little bit uh, kind of a, um, it's almost similar, but uh, with a little bit more details uh, around the, uh, uh, the, the uh, related to the uniformity related, whereas social criteria uh, relates, refers to the uh, D50 only. The Schwarz criteria is a little bit more detailed and it is about the D10, D50, and D40 and D70. So uh, it's a little bit uh, more uh, uh, kind of um, detailed uh, technique to to for for deciding the size of uh, uh, gravel pack sand okay uh, i finished for today uh, is there any questions so we will talk about that in later uh, uh, the um, and when we will talk about uh, the uh, gravel pack assessment and uh, and evaluation. Okay. Yeah, Any I'd other like questions? I'd like to ask about those zonal isolation. Uh -huh. uh, my question is, how do we actually achieve zonal isolation of water breakthrough or gas breakthrough in case perforated zone? while we have gravel pack in place. So can you see the slide? Yes. So uh, how we achieve the uh, water or gas isolation, so producing zone isolation in case toll, uh, uh, case and perforated uh, completions? By packers or by uh, uh, closing these uh, the uh, zones, yeah, and the same here. Yes. So what we can do here, we can plug these zones and run the tubing through this the the zones that are that we have plugged. So plugging this uh, the uh, gravel pack is easy. And uh, so we set packers, uh, saddle packers, straddle packers, uh, or dual packers, and plug those, and then run tubing through these zones. The same way as we do it for 
uh, cased and perforated hole without gravel pack. Okay. Because this so, zone, zone isolation means the zone isolation between these zones, the gravel packed zones or perforated zones. It doesn't mean between these perforations completely. So that means gravel pack or those elements of gravel pack doesn't create any extra obstacle for zonal isolation process yet? Yeah? No. We can okay. cement it, squeeze cement it. We yeah. can just uh, uh, put the packer here and run uh, the tubing through this packer. So this zone will be isolated. Um, so there is a uh, at least two that comes in my mind. Or oh, the, the easy way, of course, to plug this with cement, uh, squeeze cementing. We inject the squeeze cementing into these zones and into this gravel pack and to, into this, uh, the uh, reservoir part, uh, the formation, and this whole zone will be uh, the, uh, plugged. And then we run our tubing to, to the below or uh, the other way. We can shut off to, if we have breakthrough, water breakthrough from the lower zone, then uh, it's even easier just to put cement uh, bridge here so no production from this zone. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? It's a man's question. Yes. Uh, teacher, um, which uh, type of sound control method is the most modern version? Modern? Yes. Uh, well, the most modern version, you, we have to look at the uh, latest uh, developments for all of the service providers. But these are given to you as a uh, reference to have an understanding. Uh, if we talk about the moder most modern uh, the uh, from the textbook point of view, from the uh, development point of view. It is a uh, premium expendable uh, screens. OK, uh, premium expendable, definitely. Uh, uh, it is in terms of uh, the uh, development, the latest developments. OK, and the woven mesh uh, sand screens. Uh, uh, but still, there are some the, uh, the uh, improvements or the uh, advancement or in all uh, the uh, sand, sand control uh, techniques and technologies. It depends. We will talk about the uh, in a particular case, which uh, the ACG had, especially in Chirag Wells, and then applied on Azari and. Uh, deep water in Ashley part of the ACG. Uh, but again, the modern does not, of course, mean uh, the, the best as a sand control, because each of them has their uh, uh, specific uh, areas of application. Uh, once uh, it will depend on the reservoir type, as we talked about the uh, sand formation, sand uh, size distribution, uh, formation type, uh, the drive type, etc. Okay, therefore, uh, if you are asking the lastly uh, develop it, it is a expendable, uh, sorry, expandable, uh, but the in terms of efficiency. It will depend on your design, your, your uh, formation, your uh, uh, sand quality, uh, both formation and the uh, if you are applying gravel pack. Gravel, uh, uh, the uh, pack sand uh, quality and distribution size. So it will depend on reservoir fluids as well. What are you producing? We have one more question, teacher. Um, yes. In smart completions, 
uh, which method is more effective? What do you mean by uh, which smart compass? Smart completions again are kind of a completions that has a zonal isolation. I mean, zone, uh, case zonal. cemented teacher. Case cemented completion. Well, what 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 does it mean? Which? Uh, because uh, smart smart. For means example, uh, gravel packing is more suitable, uh, I think, in open field completions. A smart one? Um, yes, and encased and cemented completion. Uh, which type is more effective? For example, in uh, open uh, uh, whole, uh, completions, gravel packing is more effective. Okay, you are you want to compare uh, open hole gravel pack smart completion and uh, uh, the uh, case tools uh, gravel pack smart completion because yeah. now they have now there is a uh, smart completions open hole smart completions with the uh, uh, external packers or the uh, packers that are installed uh, in the reservoir, without, uh, not in the casing. So uh, uh, there are some smart completions with the open hole, but isolated zone, zonal uh, production in in uh, horizontal wells. Okay, so we can uh, so the smart completions are designed to let you understand, let you. Uh, so the, the, what does mean smart completion? It means uh, you have a devices or a equipment that is uh, controlling the pressure, flow, and temperature from each zone where these uh, the uh, sensors or devices are uh, installed. So we uh, divide the, uh, especially in horizontal wells, it might be in vertical walls as well. Uh, uh, for each zone, uh, they install a, a ICD or ICVs or inflow control de uh, devices or flow control devices uh, or de flow control valves. And uh, then you uh, you can uh, uh, valves and devices. Uh, the devices are uh, to to control. So they uh, provide uh, information about pressure, flow, and temperature, and the valves are allowing you to close or uh, open uh, flow from each zone. So you can manage the uh, um, kind of even flow, or uh, uh, you can change this to the required uh, flow from each zone by uh, kind of uh, evening the uh, flow flow from from the reservoir okay that's the uh, smart smart completion and this smart completion can be applied to open for open hole uh, gravel packed wells uh, case stalls uh, gravel packed or uh, any other types of uh, wells Okay, so smart smart wells are the wells that have these type of uh, devices, this type of uh, the, uh, the equipment, uh, the uh, zonal uh, isolation and zonal uh, control of flow and uh, the zonal monitoring and control of the flow. These are called smart completions. And this can be again applied to open hole or case stall with gravel pack or without gravel pack. Okay. Clear. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? Thank you, Dan. Have a good day. Thank you, teacher.